Okay, this is integration packet 14B, number 19. Um, in question 18, you had looked at uh, the area enclosed between a parabola and a line and um, rotating that region around a couple different lines to create solids. So now um, 19 is trying to get us to rewrite these equations, not in terms of x, but in terms of y, and that will be used in question 20. So. Um, let's see how much algebra we remember. We want to, in 19a, complete the square on the quadratic function. So let me rewrite the quadratic function from number 18. It was y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. So we want to get a vertex form of this quadratic, and um, I'm hoping we remember. So to complete the square, basically what we want this thing to look like is we want to be able to factor it into something squared. So right now it, um, we could try and factor it, however it's certainly not going to be the same parentheses twice because of that 3. So I really would rather that 3 be something different so that I could factor it nicely um, or perfectly. Um, so what I'm going to do, there's a couple different approaches to, um, to completing the square. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first factor out the negative from the first two terms. So that negative x squared becomes positive and that positive 2x becomes negative. I'm going to leave a little space and now I'm just going to shove that 3 further down. Okay, so that 3 I'm not going to do anything with it. It's out there by itself and that negative got factored out of the two, the first two terms. So you'll see I've got this space and in this space I want to figure out the best number so that when I factor this parentheses it will factor perfectly. You can guess and check. Some of you might know the trick where you take the middle number, divide by 2 and square it. The perfect number in here is going to be a positive 1. And I know that that's true because now when I factor this inside, I'm going to have x minus 1 and x minus 1. And my goal was so that I could not only factor it, but factor it so that the numbers are the same. So that works out. I still have the negative out front. However, you can't just create a plus 1, right? We, we can't just add in a plus 1 and pretend that that is fine and, and not sort of deal with it later on. So I know that if I add something to one side, we have to add it to the other. Or if you add something to one side, you have to minus it from that same side to keep things balanced, right? We want to keep this equation balanced or equivalent to what it already is. By adding a plus 1 here, I've now changed how much this equation is worth, right? The value of this equation. However, that plus 1 is not really worth a plus 1. It's worth a negative 1. So what I've done by adding in that plus 1 is I have taken the value of this equation and subtracted 1. So in order to compensate for that, I need to add 1 on the other side. Oop, add a 1, not a 4. So by adding a 1, I've now balanced out the original plus 1, which was really worth a minus 1. So I had a minus 1, I've now balanced it with a plus 1, so my equation is no, is no different. It's still the same equation, and so now I have that plus 4 down there. So I've, I've completed the square, right? I've made this a nice, perfect factoring, and what the final answer will look like is y equals negative x minus 1 squared plus 4. And now that's called vertex form. You might remember from algebra 2, the vertex is 1 comma 4. It's an upside down parabola, so that's what we know about that. Now in part b, we need to take not only this new vertex form that I have, but I also need to take the other equation, so that's given in question 18, I'm just going to rewrite it here, the line, negative x plus 3. For both of them, we want to solve them so that they're x equals, in other words, so that they are in terms of y. Okay, so now this is just some algebra, we're just subtracting backwards or moving things over. I'm going to subtract the 4, so that's done. I'm going to divide by a negative. When I divide by a negative, the y becomes negative and the 4 becomes positive, so that's done. I now need to get rid of the square, so I'm going to square root, so that's done. And then I'm going to get rid of the minus 1 by adding 1, so that's done. And now all of that equals x.
right? So x equals the square root of negative y plus 4 plus 1. I'm going to do the same thing on the line. So on the y side, I'm going to minus 3, so that's done. And then I'm going to divide by the negative. And when I divide by the negative, the y becomes negative and the 3 becomes positive. So that's done equals x.